success is the product of positivity, is it possible that something similar applies to health and wellness? Entrepreneur and wellness consultant Cara Lisa Sham is fascinated by the way in which body, mind and nutrition are interconnected and she's happy to share her ideas with us. Cara Lisa Sham can make it seem so effortless, but she knows from personal experience just how difficult it can be to have a healthy lifestyle. She is absolutely convinced of the importance of having a balanced, holistic approach to exercise, nutrition and mental attitude. And this is the goal of her personal path to overall wellness. Health is a state of body, wellness is a state of being. These are sentiments that Kara embodies and I'm so excited to find out how she does it and how you can too. Hi Kara, welcome to Mela. Hi Karishma, thank you for having me, it's lovely to be here. Kara, take me through your health journey. I was a ballerina for 17 years. I started at the age of two and I just had such a passion for dance and performance. Um, inevitably, much of my time was spent on stage, also under scrutiny, which in turn creates an extreme awareness of the body. Sadly for me, I kind of succumbed to that pressure and for about five years, I experienced eating disorders. I felt that I needed to restrict what I was eating in order to perform better or look better. But with time, my body just couldn't handle it. And thank goodness, my teachers and my parents were very supportive and they really helped me to realize that what I was doing was not in the long term gonna benefit me at all. I kind of then re-embraced eating in a, in a different way. I uh, educated myself, I read as much as I could, I really immersed myself in health and wellness and fitness and try to take the bad and channel it into something good. My deep passion for health and wellness kind of transformed into my blog where I now have many recipes and health and fitness tips and advice for people to draw from, all of which are from my own personal experiences and that I find valuable. And I really believe that you should always use your experiences in some way to help others. I see that we've got some beautiful cleansing tea in front of us. Do you mind taking me through this? This is my daily go-to detox drink. I have it first thing in the morning as I wake up. And in here I have cumin, cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger, turmeric, cane pepper, fennel seeds, a little bit of oolong tea, which is a kind of green tea apple cider vinegar, a slice of lemon, and some raw honey. Mix it all together with some warm water, not too hot because that destroys the properties of the spices. Allow it to sit for about two to three minutes and then you drink it up. And basically that will just prepare your digestive system for the day. It gets rid of any toxins that have built up. And if you're having this daily, you, you're constantly cleansing, you're constantly refreshing and revitalizing your system. Okay, so should we give it a try? Let's go. <laughs> Spicy, I like it. <laughs> what are the cornerstones of health and fitness for you? Number one, obviously, you have to eat well. Whole foods, healthy eating, keeping it simple. It's not about restriction and dieting and cutting out food groups at all. It's just about choosing the stuff that is real and whole, that isn't processed, that isn't packaged. Then number two, I am about the mental aspect of health. So am I cultivating a positive mental environment or am I filling my mind with nonsense? Number three is movement and that is getting my body moving, getting active, getting physical. I really love uh, cardio so I'll do a lot of skipping and high intensity interval training but then I also balance that out with yoga because yoga for me is about bringing that mental aspect again into my, my training. It's about meditative movement, creating a flow. So should we get moving? Let's. <laughs> a patio above the trees made the ideal venue for a yoga session under a summer sky. I'm gonna sweep the hands up to the sky, coming into mountain pose. Forward fold all the way down. Planting hands onto the floor. Step back with the left leg. Step back with the right, coming into a full plank position. Here, be careful not to hop or extend the elbows because there you're working on bone on bone, which can create injuries. Rather slightly bend the elbows, making sure you're activating your triceps. And there you're working into the muscle. We're going to lower all the way down into Chaturanga. Here, we are engaging the arms inwards to the side body, coming all the way down to the floor and traveling into an upward facing dog. From upward facing dog, we're tucking toes under and we're traveling our body to a downward facing dog. Here you're moving the tailbone backwards, flattening the heels onto the mat and you're going to step forward with the right foot, travel forward with the left, planting hands down, forward folds, 
and slowly rolling the body all the way up vertebra by vertebra all the way up hands flowing up and coming to heart now obviously this was just a broken down version of that. You would do it much faster. Well, I worked up quite an appetite and I know you have some amazing, delicious and nutritious recipes. So let's do it. <laughs> Karalisa believes that the key to healthy nutrition lies in finding the right ingredients. And Karishma was keen to see how she chose what went into her trolley. Everyone thinks healthy eating is so expensive. How can we make it more economical? One of the key mistakes we all make is opting for convenience above all. And that's where price comes in. For example, your lettuce. Rather buy it loose, buy your spinach loose, buy your carrots loose. Also, stay away from processed pre-packaged foods such as cereals and anything that's coming in a box. Stick to the whole foods, your apples, your spinach, your lettuce, your tomatoes, your nachis, you know, your fruits, your brown rice. Well, we still have a few more things to grab, so should we go find them? Let's get to it. Let's get going. <laughs> it's like looking at all the things and like, oh my goodness, yeah. Well, Karishma, I think we have everything we need, so let's head to the kitchen and cook up a storm. Great, let's do it. So here we have a really healthy, balanced meal where we've got our grains, which is the quinoa, also some protein in there. We've got our microgreens here and endamame beans. We've then got some animal protein from the eggs. We've got some healthy fats from our avocado and our tahini mayo. This looks beautiful. How do we put it all together? You're gonna to put about two teaspoons of your za'atar into the quinoa. Za'atar is made up of thyme and sesame seeds and a few other Middle Eastern spices which are then gently roasted together and you get the most amazing flavorsome aromas. Next up we have endamame beans, a great source of protein from your beans as well. From here I'm going to add my boiled eggs. So again I have pre-boiled those about seven minutes so that they're hard boiled. Next up I've got my avocado which I've sliced. I've got my microgreens so it's very fresh and light and beautiful. And last but not least I have my tahini mayonnaise. In here and in a blender again quick and easy I've got a quarter cup of tahini, I've got some lemon juice, I've got fresh coriander, a tiny little bit of honey, some soy sauce and some ginger. We're gonna just pop that beautiful dollop of tahini on top and there you are. Your oriental quinoa endamame and boiled egg bowl with tahini mayo. It looks beautiful. And it tastes beautiful too, trust me. I can't wait to taste it. Can we go to the table? Absolutely. I love that you believe in intuitive eating because for me, I really feel that is the key to maintaining a healthy lifestyle. I really don't believe in subscribing to the norms of following any specific diet. You really need to kind of check in with yourself and, and allow your body to communicate with you and actually tell you what it needs. Starting a new eating program can be very overwhelming. How do you stay on track? Not overthinking it. Keeping it simple, but also making sure that you're committed to planning and you're dedicated to being healthy. You know, just like anything in life, it's a journey. It's not a quick fix. And there is an investment of your time and energy into health. I can't help but notice that you've got some beautiful bread on the table. Do you include bread in your diet? Well, you absolutely can if you use the right ingredients. So this really is just about swapping up your traditional flours and sugars and things that are gonna make you feel lethargic and are gonna spike your blood sugar levels and replacing those instead with coconut flour, almond flour, psyllium husk, which is very high in fiber. We've got Himalayan pink salt in there, some coconut flakes, lots of seeds, especially flax seeds, again, to keep you regular and to add in those omega-3s. And this will keep you full for longer. It will keep your blood sugar levels stable and you can enjoy it without the guilt. Cara, thank you for being such an inspiring soul. I've loved spending the day with you, but I have to say, my mouth is salivating. I cannot wait to try that bread. We absolutely have to get stuck in. <laughs> okay, let's go. The first slice of guilt-free bread topped with Karali's delicious goodness proved to be a treat for Karishma's taste buds while showing that intuition can indeed guide you on the path to nutrition.